Hi. How are Hello. you? How Can are you? Be okay and hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, it's great to have you both uh, Thank here. You for having us. Thanks for having us, for sure. Awesome, awesome. Well, we have um, a room full of, well, a few room full of uh, fifth graders who we are streaming to on the other end. Um, we're at a couple of elementary schools today. So, um, nice. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, my team will be, they might be sending me questions through that they might ask, um, but mm -hmm. I'll let you know. Um, but I'm so happy to have, have y'all both here. Um, where are you all uh, dialing in from today? Charlotte. Amazing. Okay. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. All right. Well, I would love for, um, I'll introduce myself. Um, and then I would love for you all to give our uh, kiddos a little rundown about who you are and what you do, um, because I think it's amazing. Um, so I'm Margo. I'm the founder and CEO of Enrichly. And Enrichly is a self-esteem focused e-learning platform and gaming app for K through 12. And um, we're leveraging technology like machine learning and gamification along with the data to really make self-esteem improvement fun for kids. And then we also have an on-site curriculum where we go into different schools and we implement our curriculum um, using our technology. And the kids have a blast. We send our amazing coordinators into each school and, and they're with the kids for about an hour a week. And we really teach children how to love and value themselves and really how to put their, how to put their mental health first um so i will let uh miss shylin introduce yourself to our kids hey everybody my name is shylin i am a wife a mom a ceo um this is my amazing husband kelly um i own a skin and hair care brand called shy beauty and as mentioned, I'm mom to a lovely one-year-old and soon-to-be mom to our second child. Nice. That was a nice. Amazing. Thank you for that. And, and congrats on, on the kiddos. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, I'm Kelly Ray Jr., the husband, uh, you know, the father, you know, the son, and all of that. But I'm an artist um, and an athlete. You know, I don't like to necessarily put categories on to what I do because um, I feel like I'm growing every day. I'm learning every day. You know, I'm exploring every day. So those are the two things that you might know me as, you know, so that's what it is. All right. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you both um, for those introductions. And um, so I wanted to kind of start this conversation off by by asking this question I always ask um, people who come to our webinars and it's what does self-esteem mean to you um, and Kelly I'll let you answer that question first um, but go ahead and you can elaborate on, on what what that means to you I will say uh, to me self-esteem means um, the way you talk to yourself you know the way you think about yourself um, you know, on a day to day, we're all just in our heads, just us. And, you know, you also have a voice that's kind of either telling you to do things or, you know, telling you what you feel or you look like. So I think that self-esteem is how you control that voice and, you know, how you move forward throughout your day and your life. And most importantly, um, the words we say to ourselves, either out loud or in our mind, they have power. And especially over our self-confidence and the way we feel and perceive ourselves. So um, just knowing that and keeping that in the back of your minds, always speak positivity, always speak growth over yourself because it, it, it plays a huge part, whether you realize it or not, subconsciously, it, it really resonates with, with who you are. So amazing. 
Interesting. Thank you for those answers. Um, Kelly, you said something about it, it's how we talk to our minds, right? Um, so how do we kind of keep our minds from talking to ourselves negatively? You know, big hitting on the head. Well, she just hit the nail on the head, you know, what she said. Obviously, positive self-talk is always, it's how I started, like, you know, I used to be really like down on myself because how I was raised, it was like, I have to be perfect or as close to perfect as possible. Right. So, you know, I would always just if I didn't hit that threshold or I, I didn't feel as if I did what I was supposed to do, then I was really hard on myself. Like I would really get depressed. I would, you know, go into like, a, you know, a deep sorrow, you know, and my energy wasn't the same. And I, I got tired of that. So like I kind of just started talking positively through my to myself in the hard times, like everything is always easy in the good times, but in the hard times is when you're really tested. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think the hard times um, is when we kind of look at ourselves and it's like a turning moment. And in that hard time, I feel as though is kind of like when it matters the most, you know, um, right. like we could, we could talk positively in our minds about ourselves when we're feeling good and when we're feeling great but it's really the time when you feel horrible and yeah. you force yourself to really remain positive and have a positive yeah. mindset and really look at as opposed to looking at something as if it's it's a negative you have to change your perspective i always right. say if you change the way you look at things then the things that you look at will start to change Right. I, I agree. And I have one thing to say, too. And it's like, you know, everybody wants to say like L, L, you know, but what does that letter stand for? I think it stands for lesson, you know, and I think you okay. never lose. You just learn. You know what I mean? That's like two L's you could throw right back at them if somebody tries to call you a loser. So and re realistically, realistically, it's hard to stay positive when you're going through a really tough time, a really dark time things aren't going your way, but it's important to know that this too shall pass. So if it's not going to matter in the next couple hours, if it's not going to matter tomorrow, in the next five years, 10 years, it, is it really worth, you know, downing yourself and being so down about it in the moment? Is it going to work? Is it worth it tomorrow? Just keep, <laughs> just remember that this too shall pass. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. Um, and I think kids everywhere uh, should really keep that mindset. Like when we, when they feel themselves getting angry, think about, all right, a year from now, five years from now, is this really going to matter? Right. And I really, if they take that, that perspective, because I know I do it all the time, but if they take that perspective and they ask, is this going to matter a few years from now, it will really help them to shift their mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, so, okay, so Kelly, how did you feel about your self-esteem and do you feel it, that it played a part in your success as an NBA athlete? Yeah, um, I definitely think my self-esteem played a big part in it. And it's like early on in my career, it was the negative side. Like I felt, you know, I was I was who I was from when I was younger, obviously. So this is why kids like to to backtrack I'm sorry like kids you have to think five years in advance you know when I was your age I wasn't I was very stuck on what I wanted now you know what's would look cool now who was cool now but in five years you're going to be closer to where I'm at than you know where I'm at right now so remember that that in five years, you're going to be looking people in the face that you look up to and you you don't want it to be awkward whenever you're looking at them and you're better than them, you know, because then they're going to you're going to realize that they don't like you anymore. So um, but my my self-esteem came from a lot of that, man, a lot of negative um, self-talk because I was trying to be perfect. You know, I felt like I had a lot of people to please, you know, when I was obviously going through, you know, AAU, going, then going to, you know, the whole recruitment process. You know, you have to be damn near perfect for, excuse my French, but for these people to um, really like take you seriously. So it's it's a good challenge though, you know, because obviously being professional is one thing and then also holding yourself to a standard is another, but where are you at mentally? Like, are you happy? You know, and I had to learn that 
I wasn't happy. So I had to get happy. I had to find out what happiness was. And then I met this, you know, beautiful queen who really turned my life into flowers and like, you know, beauty. So everything <laughs> happens for a reason though. And I really like, you know, I think, I think the hard times and I think the times that I was hard on myself because now, you know, I, I'm better off because I don't want to go back to speaking to myself in a, in a bad way when I'm going through something, because that's going to only slow me down. It's not going to help me get through it. So now we get through everything strong. So, <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, and you said something uh, about, you know, there was a lot of pressure on you and a lot of kids are facing some type of pressure from either parents or teachers, um, friends. What would you say to them when it comes to, you know, facing pressure like that, but still keeping your self-esteem at like a healthy level. You want to go? I mean, I would say everything is going to be hard first and foremost. So like, don't just not do your best because it's hard. I think that that's a cop out. You know, I think that we're all capable. We all get the same 24 hours. So the people who obviously, you know, make the most of those 24 hours are going to be better off in the long run. So I always remember that part and, you know, realize like, yeah, once you get past that, you get into a consistent groove where everything becomes easier. And then you can really, you know, be one of the cool people who, you know, everything just looks easy because you put the hard work in when everything was hard. So, yeah, I love that. So I think the number one takeaway that I got from that is keep going, even when things seem hard, even when people seem to put so much pressure on you. Um, don't think about that. Just think about, you know, the win at the end. Um, so Shailene, when it comes to you and your pursuit as an entrepreneur, which I know can be very difficult, um, how does your self-esteem play a part in that? So um, my brand was actually built off of um, things that I went through when I was younger. Um, I wanted to be better than my circumstances. Um, I went through it was tough. I moved around a lot as a child. Um, I lived in several communities where I, there weren't other people who looked like me. Um, so it was really hard for me to have access or learn about, um, you know, what I could use on my skin and my hair. So I used that to help drive um, Shy Beauty and build Shy Beauty um, and create a, a safe space, an affordable space um, for hair and skin care. Now, um, as a child that moving around a lot and not being around people who look like me really affected my self-esteem because I viewed myself as different and I felt like I needed to look like everyone else when in actuality we're all we're all unique and we need to embrace that we're all beautiful in our own way so um when I was planning my business and and working on getting her off the ground um I really wanted that to be the foundation for that and the toughest part is getting started. It's always getting started. Once you get started, you shoot to the moon. Like Kelly said, put in the hard work now and in the end, it'll pay off. So having that confidence and having that drive is what really helps fuel you to, you know, attain your dreams. So yeah. never giving up and kind of back to the last conversation that we were having. Um, if you can't stay, if you can't stay motivated, stay consistent consistency is always key <laughs> yeah I love that absolutely love that um you know there was a group of middle school girls and we held a class on um it, it was a I guess you could say a class on entrepreneurship and uh a few of the girls said that they really wanted to start these beauty brands but they had no idea where to start and how to start um and uh that was similar to the advice that I had given them. It's always hard to start. I feel like because people want to start when everything is perfect, um, right. but nothing will ever be perfect. And my number one thing is just start the thing, fail faster, figure out what doesn't work, what does work so that you can excel at what does. Um, right. I absolutely love that. Uh, thank you for those gems. Um, okay, so... I would love to know what are both of your thoughts on uh, mental health and how youth can access mental health? Um, mental health is really important because our mind controls everything. Our mind controls us. 
everybody has their own mind. So we all have to find what works and what doesn't work within it, you know, and that obviously goes from growing up. But the best way that you can help yourself right now at, at, at young age is take it seriously. Like, don't just think it's something that older people talk about because they're old, <laughs> you know, just think about it as like, all right, one day, you know, God, you know, God speed. I'm going to have to, you know, be strong mentally because life is not going to always be how it is now. And it's, it's, it's a harder pill to swallow at a younger age, of course. But just have it in the back of your mind right now as you have fun, as you continue to learn and bump your head and grow. I love I that. Like, um, right now, especially um, being young, there's a lot of there's a lot to to learn and experience about the world. But as you go through, you know, each year, each grade, um, you learn a little bit more. Now, what you'll learn along the way, and this is this is key, you guys. Remember this. There are things that will make you feel good temporarily, but if you don't feel good long term, it's not for you. So, I mean, we can take that and apply it to social media as well. If you're looking at things on social media, that don't make you feel good about yourself, stop looking at it. Find something that you can indulge in that makes you feel good and resonates with the type of person you want to be. So always keep that in the back of your mind because this plays a huge role in our self-esteem more than you know. And social media runs the world right now, you guys. So follow pages on social media that feed your soul, that you know push you to want to be the person you want to be. That's that's or really important. Or don't get on it. Or don't get on it at all. I mean, I would just say read books because there's a lot of great books out there. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> whatever you guys, however you guys, ebooks, whatever, <laughs> that's really important too. <laughs> make sure you're happy. Yes. Like always the goal in life is to be happy to make sure the people around you are happy. You know, and you can't make the people around you happy if you're not happy in yourself. That is such. That is so true. I don't even. <laughs> Those are so many gems that y'all just dropped now. And Shailene, you mentioned social media. Um, how can we as a society really use social media for good? Because so many kids like mindlessly scroll on social media and they really don't understand the full spectrum of what that is doing to our minds. So how can we use it as a force for good um, as opposed to a force for evil? Yeah, I'm, I mean, and that's why I wanted to t I wanted to touch on that, because like I said, there I used to spend a lot of time looking at things that made me feel bad about myself. And I didn't realize I felt like I needed to look a certain way, be a certain way. But at the end of the day, it's all unrealistic. It's social media. We you know, people control a narrative of what they want to be on social media. So just know that you guys it's not real. Social media is not real. Um, we don't have to participate in every trend. Not every trend is is good <laughs> or healthy for you. <laughs> um, so always knowing that. And like I said, try to look at things that feed your soul and push you to who you want to be. Look at people who motivate you. Um, if you're, you know, spending a lot of time on social media, people who you want to be like, people who, you know, um, who can also help educate you on how you can be better. Um, or even just like those quote pages that put, you know, wonderful quotes every day. Oh, good good morning. I love myself. I am beautiful today. Yeah, <laughs> <that. Love> affirmations. <laughs> Absolutely love that. Um, so I would love to know, Kelly, what would you tell your younger self? Um, just not necessarily about... Um, chasing dreams but what would you tell your younger self right now about failure um fail more <laughs> to be honest with you like you know the the more you're failing that means the more you're trying and you know when you're I'll put it in a reference like when I'm working out and I'm trying to get better you know playing basketball the more I lose the ball the more I miss the more I get better in my workout you know, because like now I can correct myself. Now I can make those tweaks and those adjustments, see what doesn't work and what does work. So, you know, when I was younger, I wanted to be perfect, you know, so I was like doing everything right till I got it right. And then once I got it right, like I was 
I was stuck on that, what I got right. You know, I was scared to like add and expand. So yeah, fail more, man. Don't be afraid to fail at a young age, but there's going to come a time where like failure costs you. So, you know, don't think that that's okay, you know, whenever it's not okay. So essentially, I feel like um, viewing failure as a learning lesson. And if you're going to fail, at least fail knowing you did your best. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh my gosh. I think so many people don't try to do something because they're afraid to fail. And it's like, you got to get past that, you know, that that fear of failure. The people that are laughing at you won't get past where they're at because they're obviously think they're better than somebody who's going to be better than them one day, you know? Yeah, so. it's so true. Yeah. And it's like <laughs> the kids that we that we see, that we work with, the, the kids that are, are, are watching this webinar, um, and they go through a lot of that. And, you know, they don't put themselves out there. They don't ask the questions that need to be asked because they are afraid of that failure or they're afraid of what other people might think about them Mm -hmm. um so I love everything that y'all said so remember that kids fail Mm -hmm. fast fail more um Mm -hmm. (laughs) so okay if you could if you could do anything else besides what you're currently doing uh what would that be Uh, this is a tough question I mean I would obviously be like a obviously still in the fashion industry I would be a designer you know at a where you know at my own warehouse or finding warehouse spaces and actually being hands-on with garments and learning how to cut and sew and things like that but film and media is like one of my big things I would like to act or you know direct you know and do the do things behind the camera and on the camera so I would probably be an actor yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I um well, okay. All right. <laughs> like there's a, there's a couple things that I would love to do like um psychology. Oh, I wanted nice. to be a psychologist, um a therapist, yeah, or um a journalist. I love writing. Love writing. So <laughs> those are are really interesting career fields. I know some of our kids um you'd be surprised at some of the things that they said they wanted to do. Um, I think someone at a middle school, they said they wanted to be a biometric engineer. Um, and wow. for that to come from them, you know, at this young age, I'm like, oh, wow. Y'all are really- some, <laughs> got some great people in yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so Shailen, I'll start with you. Um, what was your biggest mental health challenge and how did you overcome that? Um, I would say loving myself, loving um, the skin that I live in. Um, like I said, I told you guys a little bit about my um, background when I was growing up. Um, so I used to get bullied for that. Um, I was bullied really badly one day that I even went home and I cut all my hair off. So, um, yeah, it was really, it was a really traumatic experience. Like I said, the words we say to ourselves and allow other people to say and instill within us stick and it can have dramatic effects on us long-term. But as I got older, I realized how uniquely beautiful I really was on the inside and how that, you know, it's on the, the inside what counts and it'll reflect on the outside. And so overcoming that challenge, I would say that's probably one of the best things that I ever did overcome because I I was once that really quiet, shy, insecure person that just was so angry all the time. Um, yeah. So overcoming that was just really eye-opening and it makes me view the world a lot differently now. You know, it's so it's so interesting how I feel as though when we get older, we realize like, oh, wow, well, I am such and such and such. But what if we realize that that when we were so much younger, right? Like how different Mm -hmm. our lives have turned out? How many mistakes would we not have made um, Mm -hmm. if we would have realized that when we were younger? And so many of our kids, they don't know the value of themselves. And this is why they fall into things like peer pressure. Um, This is why they go down the wrong road and they may take a detour 
an unnecessary detour. Really, it's because they were not understanding how to love and value themselves. Um, so I definitely think it's it's a part of our mission to really help kids see at an earlier age how uniquely special they are um, and really how valuable they are and how the world sees them is is not the way they may see themselves and that's okay um so uh so thank you for the answer uh what about you kelly well i mean i would say like my biggest mental health challenge growing up was like trying to impress people mm. uh that that affected how I saw myself the the most, you know, and I would want see, you know, I wouldn't seek validation, but I would just more so like want to know if I was doing the right thing from other people, or I would want to know, you know, if I was good enough, things like that. So once I started like seeking validation within myself, and I was happy with who I was, and you know, who I presented myself to be to other people, like I, you know, a lot of the you know, the sun started coming out again in my life, you know, and in my in my mind because I operated differently. So, you know, at a young age, if you realize that, like, you're not going to impress everybody, everybody's not going to be happy. You know, there are going to be people who just don't like you just because you breathe in the earth that they, you know, the air that they breathe in. So, you yeah. know, be ready for that. But like, as long as you're happy and you love yourself, then that's all that matters. You know, that's so true. I think that was one of my big vices growing up. It was like, I wanted to please everybody and I wanted to make sure everybody was like, okay. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, the, I guess, rules to developing healthy, healthy self-esteem is to set healthy boundaries and really to understand that everybody does not have to like you. And I really right. have to like embed that in my mind and have that be a mantra and I think so many of our kids get so caught up into oh well so and so doesn't like me and then they try to change themselves based on what that other person might want and when we do that we end up losing because we are one person with this group of friends and then we're another person with this group of friends and then we kind of get lost within ourselves and we're like well who am I really, you know? So I think that's such an important thing to keep in mind. It's like, you don't have to impress anybody. Impress yourself. Um, there, there, there's so much value in just being you. I mean, this person might not like you today, but tomorrow they probably will just keep being you. Jealousy will make people do and say crazy things. Jealousy from other people made me go home and, and cut my hair off. Like, why would I do that? Oh, my beautiful curls, come on. <laughs> So just so if, if you're being bullied, if someone if someone doesn't like you, like be you. They'll come around eventually. And if they don't, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> that is so true. And I, I feel like we try to tell kids this uh so often. But when they're get, when they get caught in the when they're right in the thick of it, that's when I feel like they're in like this fight or flight mode. Like, okay, should I change who I am or should I just say, you know, I don't care? and just kind of go with who I really am. Um, so I think that's a, that's still a huge obstacle that even adults face right now today. Um, so I don't know. I, I think those were some amazing gems that we just dropped. And I really hope that you kitties are listening and you're taking this advice to, um, and really applying it to wherever you are right now. Um, Okay, so my next question is, who is your biggest inspiration or influence um, to make you who you are today? Like, who inspires you? Okay. Um, well, if I'm being honest, I what kind of pushed me to, you know, be who I am today was looking at my environment and all of the people I didn't want to be like. Mm. Um, so it wasn't necessarily a person. Um, it was just more of a feeling, a type of person that I didn't want to be. Um, and then obviously eventually learning to really love myself. Like I said, I, I grew up with a lot of anger. So um, I wanted to be better than my circumstances. I wanted something I, I knew that wasn't for me and there was something out there that was for me, something that would make me feel whole and happy. And until I found that, I wasn't going to stop. 
it's like a fire and once yeah. you get started it just it never dies out so um staying consistent in pursuing my dreams and the person I wanted to be and figuring out who that was along the way which required you know making mistakes and having to grow from them so amazing say I think making mistakes and having to grow from them um that's such a gem and I think when you I never really looked at it like that like well maybe it wasn't a person maybe it was like just my environment that I knew I didn't want to be like such and such or or I, I didn't want to be like that so what can I do to be different um I think that's a really great way to look at things thank you for thank those you. those gems I don't I don't my, I grew up with a single father um you know and, and my dad was strong for sure um we're not gonna get into that or, but it was just like I never really grew up looking up to him because I knew that I could be more and there was more out there. So, you know, I just grew up kind of like heavily relying on like that voice in my head. And, you know, I guess I I looked up to who I wanted to be, you know, kind of the pinpoint yeah. with what Shai said. Like I looked up to who I wanted to be. And now that I grow older, like, you know, I, the only person that I strive to be, you know, more and more like every day is Jesus Christ. Um, I love that. Yeah, because like he walked this earth and, and pretty much just left his impact in the most positive way so you know that's yeah. kind of the only person I would say I look up to oh I I absolutely love that I think that's something that our kids definitely needed to hear um because there are so many people and, and influencers that they look up to right now that aren't the best example or, or they aren't exhibiting the best types of I guess character traits um, that would really mold them into being like the best that they could be and really helping them reach their full potential. Um, so I think both of your responses are like super cool. Um, and I don't, I don't even know if they were, uh, if they thought, <laughs> if they're looking at those answers, like, um, they were expecting them. I think mm -hmm. that when people look at, um, influencers, they're expecting more of your, generic responses but I love how real you both are um and really how wholesome you are you know like you're you're able to give these kids some gems that they can really use and apply um okay so we have a couple of questions in the chat these are really good questions um what kind of obstacles do you face today someone put in there Oh man. Um, well today um in our life we face just like real life responsibilities. That's like the main obstacle that we both face, trying to run a household, run a family, run, you know, our businesses. And those are just our three things. But we also like break it down into three things. Like we have like God and family, we have, you know, our businesses, and then we have like us right and you can obviously god comes first but you know we come we mix the other two around because sometimes some things are more pressing than others so i would think i would say our responsibilities are you know and, and compartmentalizing those things and then try to find free time that's kind of yeah. like the big challenge that we face yeah yeah okay well um another one of our kids asked and this is interesting does being a celebrity make your self-esteem better <laughs> no I don't I don't even I don't ever like you know I cringe when people call me a celebrity or say like you know I'm a celebrity bro like I was just you like you know it comes fast and then you're still the same individual you were before anybody even knew you yeah. you know and then now like the only people that that works for to to answer your question is those people who need people who need others to feel their ego like oh yes you need yes. validation from other people and then you know you need to hear that you're dead of course like it helps. There's, there's a lot as well that goes I mean when you're a person of stature or a celebrity you're also subjecting yourself to a lot more criticism so mm -hmm. I mean you guys know cancel culture and you know yeah. when everyone attacks a celebrity it's like nonstop. so I mean imagine that at like a huge proportion 
So, yeah. I mean, that can be very detrimental to someone's self-esteem as well. So it's actually a lot harder <laughs> when <laughs> your entire life is put on blast for everyone to know about. Yeah. See. So, um, no, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is so true. And I think kids now, Nowadays, they look at celebrities and influencers and they're like, I want to be like them because, you know, they have so many fans or they have so many followers or whatever the case is. And they think that that makes them feel better. But just like what you said, Kelly, it, those people, if those people need outside validation, do you really even have a healthy self-esteem? Like what happens when you strip all of that away, right? right. Like what happens when you really have to look at yourself and validate yourself, only um so I think that's sh- so true and so many of our kids need to know that fact because I feel like they do so much to either bring attention to themselves on social media and it, where they they're making themselves look crazy um they do these interesting challenges trying to go viral trying to become a celebrity themselves but they really don't know what's behind becoming a celebrity um mm-hmm. So that's one of the, the there's another thing about this generation too like though you know it's cool and all to have a good video or a good some good content that everybody sees around the world but what about after that you know like yeah. do you have it figured out to whereas you have a plan that you want to take off from that one hit that you just got like because a lot of people are one hit wonders and they never come back from that they have an actual it's actually harder for them to come back from that because people have expectations Mm -hmm. you know so like yeah you want to go viral you want to do this and do that but like if you don't have a plan to go with it you know you're not going to give the people what they really want you know and they're going to be disappointed in you and you're going to be internally disappointed in yourself too so yeah so true trying to keep up with people's uh, what people are satisfied with and yeah. it's like okay I did this now I have to do the next thing to stay relevant or whatever the case is right, um, right. so okay this is a really good question how do you get through bullying and people talking bad about you when you have anger issues hmm. <laughs> um, yeah I, I had anger issues as, as a youth in the in my youth youth ages for sure um, and dude like you know there are two decisions you can make you get everything is a choice you could either take the high road or the low road you could either walk away and allow that person to just eat their words and say what they said to you or doing what they're doing to you and have to face god you know and and all the consequences that come with that or you can fight back and you know you are also in trouble you now are going down that same road as the individuals who are bullying you man so I would say definitely stand up for yourself you know never just take that you know never allow someone to disrespect you but you don't have to like fight them back because you're better than them already you know obviously they see you like you know think about it like people that bully like people that get bullied the bully has to see you in order to come up to you and force you to you know or bully you so as long as you don't look at them or you know you don't see them you're already better than them they're just jealous so it's all it's all jealousy people Mm -hmm. people hate to see you doing good um so I mean that's like that's the best thing you can do keep keep doing good whatever you're doing you're doing something right so keep doing it and do a damn good job at it part part of my (laughs) bullies are just people who are jealous of you there's something about you that intimidates them yeah or them their self-esteem hurt and I mean that's those are internal problems that that person has to figure out or probably has going on it's not a reflection of you or who you are so remember that and just keep doing it keep walk walk with um what's the word um no um walk with grace handle it with grace oh I love that yes handle it with grace yeah, yes. handle, it, handle it with grace. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, this is the last, well, one of the last questions. Jessica Glenn asked, do you have oh. any pets? We have a step pet. We have a step pet, yes. We um actually, you know, we we took in this white French bulldog. His name was Winston. You know, he he needed some love we share him with a family member and we take him in every now and then yeah oh 
French bulldog. <laughs> For people who don't know, Jessica Galan is her mother and yeah, okay. Life. And Winston is her dog. So yes, that's our only pet. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And okay, there is a, a question from another question from one of the kids. Uh was there anybody or what or who encouraged you to become a basketball player, Kelly? Um, my dad. You know, my dad he used to play pickup uh with his friends at the gym and I used to just go watch, you know, shoot on side goals and things like that. And I kind of just fell in love with how different everybody's game was. Everybody brought something different to the table. And, you know, obviously looking at my dad, he brought some passion and some, you know, some energy to the game. He would slap the ball real hard every time he got a rebound. He was like a he was like a power forward. He wasn't even good, but like. You know, it was just like the energy he brought to the game. Like he would go get rebounds. He would out hustle people. And like, you know, it was it was fun to watch, to be honest with you. But I, I really liked the dudes who was like handling the rock, making shots, creating shots and really making the game art. So like, remember, everything that you do is art, man. Like you have to perfect that craft, you know, and the only way to do that is chip at it every day. So amazing amazing I love that and then so my last question comes from Chloe Jink Lincolns I think she's better I think it's spelled wrong okay what are your top three positive affirmations Shailen I'll let you go first top three positive affirmations oh my gosh there, I have a whole notepad full of them so let me <laughs> I have to, I'd have to like think of my favorite ones um we create the world we want to live in love that. um this one comes from Kelly. You you instilled this one in me, but um, I I don't. What is it? I don't in a box. You can't put me in a box. Oh yeah, I mean it's a it's something it's something like that. Um, and then there's I don't know. I'm trying to give you guys some really good ones. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I mean, let's see. You are loved. Like I am yeah, loved. I'm, is yeah. the biggest one because like I always remember. It. Everybody that you can see is not that everybody that you need to please. Beauty starts from the inside. Mm -hmm. mm, I love that one. I love that one. Well, I know yeah. um, those are some really good affirmations. I know for yeah. me, what I what I love to say in the morning is um, I'm deliberately chasing my own positive outcomes. Like, yes. Um, yes. And then I love to say <laughs> I am a money magnet. Um, and then another one is, um, I desire all of my wants and I adore all of my wants yes. and, uh, new perspectives are always mine. I know this is more than three. Um, but then there's another one that I love to say, and it's really because when we are thinking about our goals and our dreams, we sometimes become impatient, but the one that always comes comes to mind is like I'm feeling optimistic anticipation without the feeling of doubt unworthiness um or impatience and mm -hmm. every time I say that to myself it kind of calms my mind down and it's like okay it whatever I want it is mine if I put my mind to it it's going to come to me if it's for me it will happen um mm -hmm. so anything that I might be chasing that is like taking forever to come um mm -hmm. I say that to myself and it kind of just just calms my mental um so and I think Kelly you already said yours right yeah I kind of just sprinkled in there <laughs> uh, I think um oh we talked about this earlier um as well Margo but if you're going through a tough patch mm -hmm. always tell yourself this too shall pass because yeah. that 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 holds weight especially if you're you know feeling down yeah no it's so true and I, I made a video about that the other day and it's like literally uh whatever you're going through right now I promise you you'll you will it, it will pass but you have to stay resilient in that Absolutely. um and one of our kids asked if I live in a bad area will I ever get out yes it's all it's all on what you put into the universe it's mm -hmm. all in what you tell yourself every day when you wake up you say I will get out of here you know, I'll, and when you go to a nice area and you see an, a nice car or a nice house, you say, I will have that one day. And you affirm that 
and you continue to believe that about yourself and put put yourself in that environment and I promise you you'll be there in no time yeah I think so many of our kids don't have access to that type of mindset or know how to do that so what you just said is so it's so important and it's so vital especially for the kids that we work with because we know where they come from and Uh, I come from New Orleans Louisiana man like you know uptown ninth war whatever you want to call it like it was I saw graveyards on every corner you know and it was really like that was my childhood and that's what I remember for the first nine years of my life and then you know I moved to Texas you know after Hurricane Katrina and I just saw land I just saw all this land and all this space and all, all these cows and all. I was like, what? Hey, this is, what America right here. This is you know, America right here. And so man, like I was then I really started to see like, I want that. Like, I feel like somebody got to own that. Like somebody yeah. has to somebody has to go do something out here, man. So why not be, you You know? Yes. So very true. So very true. Um, well, I know we are coming to a close. I had so much fun with you both. Um, if there is any last messages you want to leave with our kids, please do. If not, that is perfectly okay. Um, we will, for all of our kids who were not able to attend, we will record this and it'll be available in, in Richley's platform. Um, so you can log in, you can share this with your friends, share it with your parents. Um, and if I could say one last thing is just you know, take everything, all the gems that Kelly and Shylin gave you and apply it right now. Don't think you have to wait, um, you know, until you're older, like listen to, to what they're saying and really live it and, and, you know, keep being true to yourself and keep developing a healthy self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you, you know, from me and Shy and the Ubres for allowing us to talk to y'all. You know, yeah, man, We you have to start somewhere and Godspeed on your journey. Remember that we all breathe the same air, man. So we all get the same 24 hours. So go get it. Yes. Thank you, Margo. This is, this is amazing. Um, super exciting to be on this call with you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And I'll send you pictures of, of the kids uh, as they're watching you on the screen from their classrooms because they look so cute. <laughs> thank you thank you drink water too <laughs> hmm?